you know, make sure that they're fully up to date on everything. And I don't know if it's in frame right now, but this monster of a sprinkler that I will be taking home with me later. Yeah, oh, and it's mine, you can't have it. Okay, sure. <laughs> We'll see about that. Are you looking to maximize your cold storage space while reducing risk? The Quell Fire Sprinkler System from Tyco is a UL listed and FM approved fire sprinkler system that allows you to store commodities up to 55 feet high, 10 feet higher than other sprinkler systems. The Quell system is UL listed with the Tyco Ultra K17 sprinkler. Additionally, the sprinkler eliminates the costly false activations of damaged in-rack system thanks to its ceiling only protection. It is offered globally under our licensed contractors under the Quell brand. In Australia and New Zealand, it's sold as Vanquish. These systems are available through trained and authorized fire sprinkler professionals only. Contact your Johnson Controls representative for details. To learn more, visit tyco-fire.com and search Quell. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Fire Sprinkler Podcast. We are in Orlando, Florida, AFSA 42. Melissa, how's it going today? Ah, uh, it's great. Uh, I haven't got to gone outside yet, so my hair has not started to frizz up from the humidity. I highly recommend not stepping outside as a as a as a Canadian. It is, <laughs> it's hot at home right now. So when I came, like I said, oh, I'm going to Florida, and then I looked at the temperatures, and I'm like, it's hotter at home than it is in Florida right now. Yeah, well, you know, I'm in Minnesota, so that's like Canada light. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just you're horizontal for me, pretty much. Basically. Yeah. 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 So. Give me a little bit of history of, of your involvement. We're going to be talking about the Quell systems in a little bit, but just kind of tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself in the industry. Yeah, well, so I've been with Johnson Controls for a year and a half. Um, uh, prior to that, I've been a fire protection engineer for about 17 years. Okay. Uh, I've done design with contracting, and then I worked uh, at a manufacturer doing residential for about seven years. Um, but full consulting, specifying engineering, um, I did that. I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but had the opportunity to go back to work in manufacturing and that's really just kind of what I like to do. I like the thought of like being able to educate and teach and support customers, you know. And so when I brought, when they brought me on at Johnson Controls, uh, I was initially managing the business development team. Mm -hmm. um, but a year ago they changed things around a little bit and so now they put me in charge of um, our storage market from a vertical business development perspective. Okay. So that kind of meant that anything storage related became uh, under my almost my ownership right you know so that that did include quell and so Keep going, i'm just going to make an adjustment so yeah. your your involvement that's when your kind of involvement with quell started almost immediately were you hired for that purpose no i mean i've um not really like basically you know they said you're going to be in charge of storage we didn't really know what that was going to mean at first since it was a new role right um and i i kind of just been doing what i thought was right and you know as i as i got to know quell more and more um, and I started kind of being a point of contact for some of our customers and I, and I realized, you know, they hadn't had somebody in a position to just sort of have a, a big picture management of, of our Quell in a long time. Mm. You know, we've had this uh, system for a while now and it's, you know, it's, it's great. You know, our, our installers that are doing our Quell systems, you know, they love it. The HJs love it. Yep. Um, you can put, you know, ceiling only in cold storage. I mean, that's huge. Absolutely. So um, I saw an opportunity to you know, um, really get in and get to know Quell and, and do kind of a review of, of the of it as a, as a you know big picture and maybe see where we can make some improvements. Um, so I'll be working with a lot of our customers right now and making sure that they've got all the most recent data sheets and right. you know make sure that they're fully up to date on everything. And I don't know if it's in frame right now, but this monster of a sprinkler that I will be taking home with me later. Yeah, oh, and it's mine. You can't have it. Okay, sure. <laughs> We'll see about that. Uh, this big monster of a sprinkler is, is one of the sprinklers that are used in the Quell systems right now. Yes. How many different types of sprinklers are you capable are able to be used in a Quell system? There's two specific sprinklers for Quell. Yep. And so they are they are manufactured only for the Quell system. And okay. so then you can only purchase those sprinklers if you are you know one of the Quell licensed installers. So the Quell license is a specific license that you have. Only Quell licensed systems can buy the sprinkler. Okay. Yeah. So there's two. There's a there's yep. a K17, and then this is the K34. Okay. Um, you know, as you know, we also have the K34. Uh, you know, an appendant application and that's yep. for for you know ambient storage. But they created this upright for Quell specifically, and you can tell obviously there's a blue bulb, which means it's 286. Yep. Um, and it's a it's a big bulb, so it's standard response. Yes. And those are for some pretty specific reasons for the how the Quell system does what it does. Right. Which we you know we can talk about that a little bit, but yeah, it's um when you become a, a licensed Quell installer, 
um, you are able to purchase these sprinklers mm -hmm. and it's direct sale. So. How, how does distribution know who's licensed? Like what, what stops me from going to any of my JCI suppliers and just saying, hey, I want to buy, you know, 14, 15 of these. Every order that comes through that has these sprinklers, you know, it's a quell, so yep. they're, they're have a specific tag. They have to go through um, one person in inside sales and the orders are not released until they're approved by that okay. inside sales. So he has an up-to-date list of all of our licensed contractors. And so, yeah. The, like how far into that kind of, once you become licensed, are you able to purchase any material quell related or do you guys still because I'm, like, are you guys, how many of these systems are going in on a day-to-day -day basis? Highly specialized, are they, you're, you're, uh, you have, know? You know, we, I mean, like, I, I just was looking at a list uh, the other day. I had somebody run a list for me of like uh, Quell systems and it was, it was just in one state. And I would say there was 20 or so in the last year. Oh, I think actually it was a longer period than that. Um, but that was just in like the state of North Carolina. Sure, yeah. So yeah, it's, I mean, these are going in all over the place. The ones that, you know, the contractors that we have that are, are doing a large volume of these, they're, they're pretty steady work. Okay. Um, you know, storage as a, as a whole saw a huge spike with COVID you right. know, because yeah, everybody yeah. was, you know, they needed to have more distribution for all the stuff that people were buying on Amazon and shipping home and all that stuff. So um, that has, that market has kind of leveled off, but um, we don't see a reduction quite yet in, in cold storage applications, right. you know? So um, yeah, this is kind of just ongoing. It's a very, it's a very robust market and, and there's always striving for better ways to have protection in cold storage applications. Like we, we always want to be able to store taller and try to have narrower aisles, yeah. you know, so. Try to know. get your money's worth per square foot. Exactly, is what the, the like, name cram of the as much is. in as you yeah. can. So with the qual system, so JCI does not review design to design. Every time a system comes in, you're not verifying the design no once you become a quell qualified contractor you're it's you're, in. you're yeah you're in and you know they have to there's a there's a, a lot of safety factors and there's pretty robust um, time delivery calculation that mm -hmm. if you if you have a big enough safety you, you don't have to do a trip test oh um, so that's kind of one of the really big benefits you know there the, there's a software license that goes with the quell that it's um, so FDT is the fluid delivery yeah. calculation software FDTQ is specific specifically for Quell, because okay. there's, there's an additional um, component to the design methodology where you have um, your four, first four sprinklers that operate sequentially yep. at, at a certain time delay. Um, so we don't want any sprinklers to discharge water for at least eight seconds. Oh. But then they have to get there within you know, the 20 or so seconds. Um, so you, you've got a really tight window of water delivery. And that's one of the main reasons that it's, you know, it's, you have to be able to calc it down to the elbow mm -hmm. and when it's installed if you make any changes you kind of have to go back and make sure but if you have a safety factor of um i want to say it's 20 percent you don't have to do the trip test if you you know according to really? design methodology so what's what's involved like if i'm i'm starting out as a contractor i'm doing a lot of storage applications and i want to get into the quell market mm -hmm. what's involved with becoming a quell specified contractor you, you, you'd reach out you show that interest um, we do definitely have a process where we evaluate the customer or the contractor um, what we look for in quell licensees is a is partnerships you mm -hmm. know we do a lot of support for our quell contractors from technical support um, you know our training department uh, we, we retrain our contractors every three years to make sure okay. that anything that's changed on our data sheets any new technologies we've uh, we make sure that they're fully up to date so you know there's a lot of support on our end that goes with it yep um, so the first thing we do is we want to make sure they're going to be a partner you know if somebody just wants to win one quell job and that's it it's going to be a one-off yeah yeah it's it's a lot of investment for for a, a little reward so yeah we look for that uh, we look for um, we want to make sure we got good geographical coverage you know we've we've got some some installers that really do a, a lot of you know quell right. work and you know they kind of want to make sure that we're not going to saturate the market with the contractors <laughs> that can install quell systems but um yeah well yeah. once you become like into such a niche market like the quell systems for high piled storage cold environments things like that um yeah you, the kind of the, the the reason you would become a qualified qual contractor is so that you can kind of 
funnel those funnel projects those, to you. Yeah. And if you have 15, 20 contractors in the area, you're just, you might as well just be a regular contractor at that yeah. point, right? Yeah. There's no benefit. And it's one of those things where if, if you're just doing once in a while, um, you know, it, you want to make sure that whoever is doing it is, is very familiar with mm. the software and very familiar with the system methodology, because, um, you know, if you're only doing them like once every couple months, you know, it, it's just, you, it's easy to kind of forget some of the, the nuances that you have to remember when it comes to the design method. Mm -hmm. So is the, do, do, when you, when you qualify a contractor, is that contractor specific? Do you train each individual designer? Mm -hmm. Do the licenses attach themselves to the designers or how does that work for that? Yeah, I, I don't know exactly. I want to say, yeah, we, you know, they pay for so many seats. Right. And so, yeah, however, however many people are going to be working in the program and doing design, they are um, trained, yep. you know, so we'll have a class. Sometimes they'll come out to our facility in Cranston and they can do it in person. Okay. Um, we can also do it virtually, um, which is which is a nice you know feature. Absolutely, do it from the comfort of your um, own home. Yeah. Sometimes I think we even maybe can go to the contractor and do the trainings. Depending on the size, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the size. So, listings. What? Uh, why would I use a Quell system as opposed to any other type of sprinkler system out there? Dry, pre-action, etc. Mm -hmm. Like, why would I use a Quell system? So you know, we said, you know, the, the main thing about Quell is it's ceiling only protection in mm -hmm. scenarios where you would not otherwise be able to do so. There right. just isn't design criteria in uh, NFPA 13 or FM that allows for that. Okay. Um, we did a, a series of full scale fire tests to validate this performance based design method. Um, and so we, we have a lot of data to back up that it, you know, why it works and why it works so well. Right. So all of the components that are used are have, you know, either UL or FM, you know, listing approvals. Um, so the, the big thing though is the sprinkler. This is the only sprinkler that, you know, that this high temp. Yep. upright standard response and like I said that there's a lot of specific reasons for you know why we use this because you want to make sure that the sprinkler doesn't operate too soon um, okay explain that a little bit because yeah. you mentioned it earlier and I kind of caught it and was like okay that's weird why why in most sprinkler systems do you want early activation and fast kind of is it to allow the encapsulation of the fire pretty much so in, uh, say, just say you're looking at a standard um, high pile storage facility and, you know, regular ceiling protection where, you know, say you're able to do that in an ambient situation. Mm. Um, what happens often when you have those fire plumes, you know, you've, we've all seen the live fire videos, you get those huge fire plumes and the, the heat jet carries across the ceiling. Right. And what ends up happening, um, if it's a wet system, you know, the first couple sprinklers activate and the, the that air, that hot air will carry the droplets across and actually cool some of the immediately adjacent sprinklers. Okay. So it could potentially cold solder. Yep. And then also that it's that heat jet is carrying the heat across to um, sprinklers that are outside of the most effective ring. You know, you want to make sure that you've got a concentrated ring of sprinklers that are right over the fire. You mm. get the surround and drown kind of method. Absolutely. So the reason that the delay is important is that we give the fire enough time to operate kind of an ideal number of preliminary sprinklers. And um, what also goes into it being a double interlock pre-action is, is there's heat detection as well at a yep. lower temp. As yep. soon as it detects heat, not only are we validating that it is in fact a fire yep. and not just an accidental head activation, um, that detection starts a series of events to help, um, even though we're delaying water delivery, we also want to have it happen quickly. Once, once it's time to put the water yeah. on the so fire, we want that fire fast. The detection will pre-start the fire pump so yep. that you don't have that delay in waiting for the fire pump to get up to speed. It will also shut down um, any HVAC that's in the area, which yep. is another thing that, again, you, you want to make sure that you don't have air movement that is going to sure. impact what Affects we're trying to do. Affects patterns and stuff yeah. like that, yeah. Like I said, we're trying to get this ideal ring of sprinklers. And so what we actually have with Quell is we have um, a similar performance mm -hmm. as you would in, a, in an ambient wet system with a, a dry pre-action system. With the number of sprinklers that are being activated, it is equivalent to the performance of a, of a non-dry system. So when a contractor is getting certified, do you require them to be responsible for the fire alarm aspect from the from the releasing panel, hitting, turning on the fire pump, uh, the the heat 
the heat sensing devices, things like that, is it all one contractor or do you have a, uh, a fire alarm set of contractors that are certified as well as a sprinkler installation contractor? We don't have separate um, contracts with fire alarm. Okay. You know, so it is all through the licensee. Um, whether that means though that they still have to subcontract, you know, because there's always going to be a little bit of that, like, hey, you know, stay in your lane. This is fire alarm. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so yeah, it is. It is Inviting a package. within the industry a little bit. Maybe you know, but like our contractors order all of it, you know. So yeah. they they are trained to install the whole system. So like when you when they place an order, we also carry. Um, through via, you know, it's it's a pass through. We recommend a specific brand of, of linear heat detection. Yep. Um, you can use other types of heat detection, but we just, you know, what we've tested it with and what we recommend is, you know, a specific. Uh, it's through safe signal, signal, but you can use others like protect a wire, and yep. you could use aspirating detection. You could just yep. ask, I mean, anything to make sure that you've got those two methods of detection, you know, the, the sprinkler obviously releasing the, you know, the air in the system, and then something to verify that there is a fire Actually and get that, fire, get the yeah. rest of the things in motion. So massive, like massive sprinkler, inch and a quarter thread on this. What's the water that you're getting out of this on a, on a typical, I know it's not a typical type of system, but how much water are you discharging out of one of these sprinklers? So the K34 will discharge, I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's, it's over 200 gallons a yeah. minute. I mean, it's, it's just a massive amount of water. Um, this is a relatively new addition to the Quell line. Um, you know, it started with the K17s. Mm -hmm. In K17s, we had it tested to do up to a class three commodity, but up to 55 feet. Which, like 55 foot building, 50 foot of storage, I should yeah. clarify. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's, I'm sorry. No in route. I'm getting it backwards. This is the 55 feet. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say, K you, that's a ton of water. K17 is, yeah. is, is, you know, it's lower, but it's class three. The other great thing about the 34, though, is we can do um, group A plastics with uh, an up to 35 feet, 30 feet of storage. Wow. That wasn't possible with the K17, but we has this tested for the plastics. Yep. The other systems, the, the 17 at the at the lower elevations, but class three, and then the 34, 55 feet. Like this, that's the one that um, nothing else can do right now is right. that high storage with ceiling only. So with it being an upright, uh, obviously massive amounts of water coming through the sprinkler. What kind of limitations do you have as far as pipe size to be installed on? Like, is it a standard? Two and a half inch, three inch pipe. That one I threw yeah. you for a curveball. That one no. I kind of thought of when I was looking at it. And I'm like, you're piping with it being on the top here. I'm looking at it 250 gallons a minute times potentially two to three sprinklers on a single line. You got to be looking at a four inch line, minimum. So, uh, you know, the system size is pretty small. So that's what you're, you know, you're looking at. Um, right. You're not doing long warehouses with extended lengths right, of Right. Yeah, yeah. We're looking at maybe, you know, you can still see a, a volume of like 2,000 gallons um, for, for one mm -hmm. valve assembly, one riser, you know. So that's kind of part of it too is, is when you're doing the design. You know, you're able to make sure you have the right number of risers and number of riser rooms. But um, so I know that this can be direct installed into, I want to say it's two inch before okay. you have to worry about, you know, putting it on an S-Brig. Um, I would say like a two inch line is, branch line is. Average? Probably typical, yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's um, that's surprising. That uh, yeah. I mean, you can definitely go bigger. It just it, again, there's a lot of factors. There's sure, yeah, yeah, it's hydraulics. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How come you can't tell me how to design the entire system in this little podcast? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we can get Congratulations, into you're certified. <laughs> awesome, Melissa. Thanks for coming on and talking about the Quell systems. Uh, I really thank you for allowing me to take this one home. That's mine. I'm not taking it home. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on with the Qual systems? If somebody no. wants more information on becoming a Qual contractor, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, it's melissa.rodriguez at jci.com is my email. Okay. You can definitely reach out. Um, it's Melissa is M-E-L-I-S-A. Yep. Rodriguez ends with a Z. If you can get that right, you can find me. Absolutely, um, and I'm sure you're pretty you're pretty prevalent out on, on LinkedIn and stuff like that, and I'm sure they can go through the website, yeah. JCI. Yeah, LinkedIn is that. a great way to get in touch. I've had plenty of people reach out to me that way. Awesome, thanks for coming on the podcast and talking about Quell. Thank you, always fun. Hey everybody, I wanted to take a second to thank everybody for supporting the Fire Sprinkler Podcast over the past five years. This has been an absolute ride to be able to travel the amount that I've traveled, to talk to the people that I've talked to, to be able to get the information in this industry out there and essentially um, help create a new wave of, of content for fire protection. So uh, just a huge thank you to everybody for supporting. I hope you're still enjoying it. Anybody who's still listening, thank you.